All right, uh, welcome everyone to this, the last talk of this session. And our speaker is, uh, I apologize for my bad Italian, Cosimo Perini Proghi from the University of Genoa, and he'll talk about universal algebra in Unimat. Yes, thank you. And hello, everyone. My talk uh, is about uh, an ongoing formalization of universal algebra in Univalent Foundation. And it is based on a joint work with uh, Amato, Magesi, and Parton. Well, when I talk about foundations of mathematics, I always want to avoid the situation depicted in this uh, hyper realistic comic strip. So let me start by recalling a minimalist definition concerning foundations. According to that definition, a foundational system must satisfy only three conditions. It must give us a syntax for mathematical objects. And in UF, we have dependent types and path types. It must give us a logic, uh, a deductive system to reason about these objects. And in UF, we have uh, Martin Leff type theory and the closure properties of propositions. And it must be also clearly interpretable in the mathematic in the realm of mathematics. And for UF, we have uh, trunk complexes, cubical set, and many other construction in category in categories and topological structure. So if you agree that this is a philosophically a safe starting point. I will say now a few words on Unimat. Unimat uh, has been the first uh, uh, Koch library for univalent mathematics and now it is developed by several contributors around the world but its origins are in these three libraries, Foundations, REST, Completion and K-Theory. Um, from a technical point of view, Unimat uh, is a subsystem of Koch, meaning that we have Martin Leff type theory plus some optimization, but we do not have record types, nor inductive types, nor match construct. We have univalence as an axiom, and we have propositional resizing to handle uh, truncation. But there are also some issues. For instance, we know that U lives in U in Unimat, and that means that Unimat, like any other currently available implementation of univalent reasoning, needs further refinement. But um, anyhow, we use Unimat since the very beginning of our formalization so that we could define a signature to be an inhabitant of a sigma, of a sigma type uh, made of uh, a set uh, of symbols and uh, an array function. And similarly, we could define an algebraic structure over a signature sigma, or a sigma algebra for short, uh, is just uh, an inhabitant uh, of a sigma type uh, made of uh, a carrier set together with uh, an assignment of operations of this type to uh, symbols of sigma. And here, the type vector is defined so that uh, a vector of n elements of A is judgmentally equal to uh, an multiple of elements of A. And this allows Unimat to uh, uh, evaluate correctly many constructions that I'll talk about later. The general idea of this definition is the same as usual. A syntax for a language or a data type, say, is captured by a signature while its semantics is given by an algebra. Now, having algebra, we can also define a homomorphism between algebras, which are an amorphism between algebra is just a, a set function that preserves the operations. And here you see the type we define in Unimat. And now, since we have uh, objects and arrows, we can easily construct uh, a univalent category of sigma algebras because uh, we use the structure identity principle as it is implemented by displayed categories. So we associate to each set the property of being an algebra, to each set function the property of being a morphism of algebra, and we prove that this lives in H prop. Then we prove that uh, the identity function satisfies is in fact a, a, a morphism algebra and the property is closed under 
composition of function. And finally, to prove displayed univalence, we use this uh, proof term in Unimat. And that simplifies our goal in proving that uh, his algebra lives in H set uh, and that any two assignments of, of uh, operations to symbols are equal whenever uh, the identity map is uh, amorphism with, respe with respect to these uh, assignments. So uh, things get a bit more hairy when we move to terms because the set of terms over a set of variables is defined by induction as the, as the least set extending V, the set of variables, and that is closed under the application of symbols of sigma, but we do not have inductive types in Unimat. Anyhow, we have been able to construct this set and we can also construct the term algebra over V that has this set as carrier and uh, that assigns symbols to themselves so symbols interprets themselves as operation. And also we can, we have been able to prove that uh, uh, for any set of variables V, the term algebra over V is the free algebra over V. And in particular that the term algebra over the empty set is the initial object in the category of sigma algebra. To prove this result, we only need to uh, prove that the types you may guess uh, are contractible and we can prove that because uh, we can reason by induction of terms even though we do not have uh, uh, inductive types. That is possible because we have uh, a specific implementation of terms that I want now to sketch. So a term is just a list of symbols and variables. This list is thought to be executed by a stack machine that is implemented in Unimat by means of a maybe monad for a status on natural numbers and other trickeries for the evaluation, so that an execution returns a status error, and then we have a stack under flow, and uh, we do not have a well-formed term. Otherwise, we have uh, uh, status n, and this gives us uh, uh, a measure of the remaining elements after the, exec the execution, so that we could say that. Uh, a well-formed term always has status one after a complete uh, execution. And having this implementation, we have been also able to uh, define, to construct an induction principle to reason on these terms. And we use an inductive hypothesis on the list corresponding to uh, a given term. And using this uh, induction principle, we can define functions that Unimat is able to evaluate correctly. So we can simplify our proofs and shorten our proofs during the uh, interactive proof environment. So these are the key ingredients of the implementation, but obviously there are several definitions and lemmas behind that, uh, that formalization. And they constitute a specific, a specific file in uh, uh, our preliminary library. But now that we have terms, we also can define uh, an equation to be just a pair of terms over the same set of variables. And we can define a system of equation to be a set of uh, equation over the same set of variables. And we can also say that a sigma algebra A satisfies an equation when no matter how we how we evaluate the uh, variables uh, in the equation, the corresponding identities holds in A. And here you see that to reach this definition, we need several preliminary steps. Some of them are omitted here, but now we can easily define the, the univalent category of varieties and varieties are just algebra that satisfy a system of equation. And again, to construct this category, we use uh, the, the tools of displayed categories, so things uh, go quite straight. Basically, this is uh, uh, the, the content of our code that is still under development. Is it, it is still a work in progress, but it is available from this address 
in GitHub and this directory. And now I would like to show you what we can do with what we implemented so far. So let me switch to Emacs. Can you see that? Can you see Emacs? No, yes. Now, can you see yeah. it? Okay, yeah. Looks good. great. So uh, I imported some uh, files from Unimat and from our own libraries. And now we start with a, a definition of Boolean sim. I want to show you that we can define a semantics for propositional formulas. So we can define a Boolean signature. And here we have a constant for false, a constant for true, a, co a unary symbol for not, and binary symbols for and or and implies. Then we extend this signature with uh, variables that represent uh, propositional atoms. And we can also define this set, the type uh, of terms over this extended signature that represent uh, formulas. And we can also define operations on formulas. So we have a constant for bottom, a constant for top, negation, conjunction, disjunction, and implication. Next, we need uh, the definition of Boolean algebra. So we start uh, a proof, an interactive proof environment uh, to associate it to each uh, symbol of our signature an operation on the types of Booleans. And we can do that again, interactively, loosely, using uh, uh, the operation defined in the file more foundations in Unimat, and now we have our Boolean algebra, so we can interpret a formula, a term of our extended signature as the Boolean defining an interpretation for propositional formulas. And now I want to show you that having X, Y, and Z atoms, propositional atoms, Unimat is able to evaluate quite easily uh, the truth value of formulas, for instance, of X and not Y and Z, when X and Y are true and Z is false. And here you see that uh, Unimat returns false as expected. Similarly, X and Z implies not Y returns true. So it really works. And we can also prove that a formula is a tautology. So for instance, I want to show you that Dummett law is a tautology. So for X and Y, X implies Y or Y implies X is always true. So let's, let's start an interactive proof environment. We just need to introduce our valuation. Then we make Unimat perform a lazy evaluation on our goal. And we can see that the only thing we have to do is to check the values, the cases of values for X and Y. And then we have nothing to do. We just apply ID path to each sub goal and we are done. So the proof is, is it's extremely simplified. And similarly, we can prove that a formula is not a tautology. So for instance, we can prove that X or not y and z implies x is false when x y and z are all false so we just need to check that the valuation to false for any atom does the job and here again we apply a lazy evaluation on the go and again there's nothing to prove we just apply the path and we are done that, that is just a small example. Now let me back to my let me go back to my slide. Okay. Yeah, very good. Going back. Okay, now to just to sum up what have we done? We have introduced signatures, algebras, and varieties in Unimat. 
and we constructed the univariant categories of varieties and algebras as displayed structure over the univariant category of H sets. And we have been able to construct the initial object of uh, uh, the category of algebras and and we proved that it corresponds to the term algebra over the empty set. And more generally, we have been able to prove that the term algebra over a set V is the free algebra over V. And we could do that because we have this peculiar implementation of terms that allows us to, to use term both to perform computations and to develop proofs within Unimat. So we can distinguish two different levels of implement of automation within the system and this is in line with the so-called Poincaré principle but more generally our implementation fit the so-called methodology of small scale reflection because we have this bottom-up implementation of terms and we somehow verified it by means of this general principle on terms that uh, we use to define functions on terms and we can trust them and let Unimat uh, do the computation so we can really simplify our proofs. And finally, a few words on what we would like to do next. We would like to construct more or less universal objects and prove Birkhoff's theorem that characterize varieties in terms of. Uh, closure conditions of algebras. We would like to move to multi-sorted signatures because we would like to use more heavily dependent types. And we would like also to start a finer analysis and comparison with other formalization like the implementation, formalization of related topics, obviously, like the formalization of uh, initial semantics in Unimat by Aaron Sirchowitz and many others and uh, a formalization of algebraic theories that it is still a work in progress of mine. So basically that is the end of my talk and I just want to thank you for your attention. All right, great, thank you. So let's all thank the speaker with some silent applause. So we're, um, yeah, we have plenty of time. So let me just open the floor for questions. So just raise your hand or unmute your mic. And by raising a hand, I mean raise the hand in the participant list as I can't see all of you. All right, let me start uh, with a quick question. So in your demo, mm -hmm. you were using Eva Lazy all the time. So what happens if you use some other strategy? No, it, like... it, doesn't, it doesn't work. Right. Because, yes, because there are several constructions behind and uh, reducing to the weak and normal form with Lazy makes everything much easier. Right. Yeah, I, I, I guess... Uh, Yes. I mean, the univalence axiom must pop up somewhere, I guess, and maybe phonics and so on and then. Yes, actually, the, when, when, when we first started the implementation, we used the, the, the vector type defined in Unimat, but, but there, there is a function extensionality. Oh, how is that one defined? Is it uh, functions out of finite, standard yeah. finite sets? Ah, right, yes, then you need phonics uh, a lot. Uh, Okay. And so we modified the, the type and everything worked with lazy. Otherwise, it, it, it won't work, but uh, we're happy with that, I mean. Yeah, yeah, no, it's cool that it works. I mean, it's, you kind of have to, to some, be kind of careful in how you set things up so you don't get stuck on an axiom. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's cool. So you mentioned small scale reflection. So, yes, yes. 
it is possible to extend, for instance, in a demo, we, we, we can prove things about uh, um, atoms, but with small scale reflection, we could move to open terms, then close them and get back to the, the simplest case. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, I've been using SS Reflect for many years. I know this, like, uh, you have this Reflect predicate and stuff. So maybe it would be nice to have something like that for Unimath, uh, connect like these special tactics for yes, it should change might, the view. Yes, it could simplify several stuff. Yeah, it would be very good. Yeah, nice. Any other questions? If not, then uh, let's do another round of silent applause. Uh, okay, so that concludes 